Yes. Children's church be dismissed. Hmm. The churches 
started growing and prospering, but yet they still had a lot of deep pagan roots. It was hard to get to that. So Jesus, or so Paul came and he started writing the book of Romans, the letter to the Romans, and told them how they were free from all of that. They were free from the law because a lot of them, there was also a lot of Jewish people in the, in the land too. And so when they would try to convert, they would try to hold on to a Jewish religion, a Jewish uh, background, also with this newfound Christian religion, and then also with some of the pagans. And, and so Paul was just coming in and he was shaking it up and he was telling them, how you're free from that. Yes. You're being delivered from all that formalism. And as, as he was writing in, he was impressed in his spirit to tell them this right here as he closed his letter. And he said, the God of peace, which is a whole other message in its own that we can get into. Shall, and we know what shall means, right? Shall is a commandment yes. word. Right. Shall it mean there is no if, and, but, yes. maybe. When you see the word shall, it means definite. Yes. Shall, bruise, saint, under your feet. Now, we get to that word bruise, and it is suntrabo. Suntrabo in the Greek is what that word is. If you want to go back to the original writing of this, because, you know, I'm just going to, and some of you may laugh at me. That's fine. But I grew up in church uh, uh, from a young age all the way up cutting my teeth on the back of pews. I preached my first message when I was about 10 years old. And then I fell into a life of, of, of sin and, 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 and a life of regret. But what I'm telling you is, is I, I grew up around parents that brought the Word. But yet, I always thought that the Word was written in English. I mean, this is the King James Holy Bible. And every time that I read it, you know, and all the these, the thous, the thus, the those, and, and the be hithers and the beholds and all that, I thought that that was how it was written. So, when I found out differently that the Bible was written in different languages to the land that they were in, I thought, hmm, curious. And so, you know, someone that just barely got out of high school alive, <laughs> And I uh, uh, wasn't very educated. You know, uh, 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 I started to dig in and look a little deeper. And as I dug in and looked a little deeper into the Word, I found out that primarily the New Testament was written in the Greek language because that was the primary language of the whole Middle East at the time. The Roman occupancy had dominated the land, and therefore they forced everybody to pretty much speak their language. So when Paul or the apostles were writing, if they wanted to communicate to someone about Jesus, they had to communicate, not in Hebrew, their language, but into the language that they would be able to understand. And they would have to communicate that in a way that when it was written, that they would understand it. So the New Testament was primarily written in Greek. And so, going back and then looking at the Greek writing, Greek writing, when, uh, if you was a Greek and you spoke, it didn't have all the language, all the fillers that we do in our English language. So, there would be very few words that they may be in. When you look at original scripture in the Greek, there may be very few words in a scripture. But each word is a key word and it is very powerful. And it would convey a whole idea or a whole mindset or a whole picture. It could tell a whole story with just one word. Because as that it was in there, and they would tell that story with it, people would draw in their mind through the rest of the word of what they was actually meaning. So they didn't need a lot of fillers. And, and to my surprise, if you're uneducated like me, about every language that is out there is like that except the English language. We kind of make this thing very complex. And so, uh, but anyway... The word bruise here is soon tribo. And the actual meaning of it is to crush, to smash, and to break in pieces. <clears throat> that is the actual true Greek meaning of that word. Now, how do you think that we get it into the English language as bruise? Because the bruise is something that is formed by the crushing of the vessels underneath our skin. And so, by the crushing of the flesh, you 
get a bruise. You get the discoloration. That's how we get it into the English language. But into the Greek, it is a much more powerful and gives a much more uh, 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 dramatic meaning than the word just bruise that we take it for today. Now, something that I also uh, uh, thought was unique is because certain words that we see in the New Testament and the Old Testament, when you find them in the Old Testament and they're in Hebrew, and you find them in the Greek, they may be the same word, but they have totally different meanings depending on how that they work. But see, in Genesis 3 and 15, we find the word bruise again in the scripture where it said that God, where God was writing in there, he said he would put empathy in between the man and the woman, in between him and the woman. And he said, and he shall bruise his foot and bruise his heel. Now what he was talking about right there was prophecy of Jesus Christ coming through a woman and being born and that Jesus Christ would crush the enemy's head underneath his foot. Now see, you see in that word it said bruised twice. Well, see, here's the thing. In Hebrew, the word bruised there is shoot. Is the word there. It also means explicitly crush, smash, to put or keep under a press. And the way that they would use that in the Hebrew is in the mindset of crushing grapes underneath a press. When you would go and you would crush grapes or they would stop grapes, you would keep them under continuous pressure. And so that's where the word shoot in the Hebrew comes from. And what I thought was unique was both words, when they were translated into the English, Ruth, whether it was in the Greek or in the Hebrew, no matter how they were pronounced, they both meant crushed, smashed, and destroyed. Now here's another example of that word. Soon travel. We find it in Mark, fourth chapter, or, or fifth chapter, first, fourth verse. And this is used where Jesus and them come across the sea and they get out and there is a man that is possessed with demons. <coughs> and that they he was living amongst the tomb, amongst the dead. And him being there, they tried to put him in chains and fetters, fetters, which fetters were shackles. And so they tried to chain him up and shackle him down. But it said that he broke them into pieces. And if you look at that in your King James Word Bible, it says broke into pieces. <coughs> now that right there, broke into pieces, is the same word, sun trabo, that was translated to bruise. And the reason that I give you all of this today the reason that I tell you all of this today is so I want you to start getting a picture of what Paul is actually saying. I want you to get in your mind what he's actually telling you today. Because so often I think that we come in church and we walk out of church the same way because we do not realize the power and authority that has been given to us. And so... What Paul was telling them, that the God of peace was going to smash, obliterate, destroy the work of the enemy, Satan, in their life. And it said, in soon, shortly. Shortly, there as we break the sin, and I'm laying a foundation of this and I'm trying to hurry because I know that there's dinner in the back. <laughs> I see, that, I see everybody that woke you all real quick. Amen. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, the word shortly there was a military word. It was a term that was given. And, and, and that right there is tapu. And, and in the Greek it was tapu. And it meant 